contentment. So Dina agreed to give us another peace of mind. And this one is geared towards the folks who uh, actually uh, sell the products and hustle and sales people, right? So look, do you know already how many you have? Like 80 people okay, in your uh, space and we're looking for more, right? Correct. So uh, what are the best ways to sales people to make money? Which products to sell? Which routes to pick? Like what's the uh, uh, life hack to the space of being in sales uh, space? Like, like how do, like maybe what's the best pitch to get the grocery or diner or bar? Uh, to open up, like how the day should look like. Do you spend most of the day traveling and uh, hustling for the new places, or you maybe spending the day on your phone, calling people? Like, what's the right way of set up your day, your your week? Like, uh, if if you want to be successful in the space of uh, salesmanship, in the or uh, like a distribution space. So we have um, salespeople and we have distributors. What's the difference? The salespeople are the uh, people that create their own small route and they go out there every single day. And then you have the distributor. They've been doing this for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And they have uh, hundreds of clients <clears throat> that they serve usually two, three times a week on a weekly basis. My suggestion for the salespeople and the way I've been training them is to go within a five mile range, five miles from where they live. And basically um, on a circle. This way you go to every single existing place. Don't, mi don't miss any place. You gotta go to the gas station, you gotta go to the delis, to the pizzeria, to the restaurant, physical. physical. You gotta hit every single one. Do you make a phone call first? Do you write the email? Or Instagram first or you just go? The first time you just go. Mm -hmm. That's the first time. And uh, your first sales speech, you it should... You dress like a, in a suit, you re dress regularly? Just like regularly. It doesn't you, you're meeting... You scare them if you dress Yes. If you're overdressed, you're not going to an office, you're going to people that work hard for a living. And uh, they start at 5 in the morning. So some of these daily, they open at 4. So it's, is it better to go early, that early, or it's better at the end of the day? It, it's early. Early good. Early is good if you're hitting the delis. Mm -hmm. uh, the restaurants, you gotta hit them. Like the delis, you gotta hit them between six and eight thirty. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, restaurants, you gotta hit them between eleven thirty or eleven to twelve, so and then after four, maybe three thirty. Merchandise business with Myron. I kind of felt that after like five or six o'clock, when people already had their dinner, they already had the deal, like some cash coming in, they're much more receptive to sign the deals. Just to see it's possible in the morning, they, they see you, but they don't make a decision in the morning. Right? Well, the deli is already closed at four o'clock. So oh. that's the, the, they close early, but they put 12 hours a day. Mm -hmm. uh, the bars after five o'clock is a great target. Mm -hmm. 5, 5.30. So restaurants that have a bar and they do cocktails, that's one of the best targets. And then you also have uh, a gentleman's club, okay. which uh, they use a tremendous amount of energy drink mixed with uh, alcohol, and they just reopened. Mm -hmm. So the market right now, it's open. It's just a matter of scheduling your day and say, today I'm going to hit the delis, the pizzeria, and the restaurant. Tomorrow I'm going to hit the restaurants with the bars, uh, the gas what stations. Who lives in the wrong neighborhood? Don't you travel to the right neighborhood? Because the like, city has much more money than, let's say, somewhere in the borough in Brooklyn. And well, you actually, it's actually very surprising. Uh, Manhattan has been very quiet due to, due to the COVID. Mm -hmm. And... The neighborhood it really doesn't really matter. It really doesn't matter because it's a product that you pick up for like two, three dollars. So it's not a, a, an expensive product. Um, the, the reason why I'm saying the five miles range is because you need to create a solid foundation before you expand. Once what, what do you need when you walk in the valley? 
as a salesperson? Do you need to have your drink? Do you need to have your paperwork with you? Do you need nothing? How do you work in like, what do you say, hi, I'm such and such, like, try my drink, like, what's the, what's the best ideal sales pitch? Okay, the approach, everybody's got a different approach. The approach is personal. But um, the way I see it is walking in with the invoice book, but the invoice is covered. So it doesn't really show that it's an invoice book and one or two cans. So basically you walk in, hi, I'm Joe, how are you? I have a new drink made in Italy. Uh, it's an energy drink. It's got a, a great price. We would like for you to try it, blah, 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 blah. blah. Do you wait? Give me the hard time. Do you, do you use hard time, uh, like hard energy, like really, really aggressive, or you just wait and kind? Like, what's the best way to uh, for salespeople? You do not take no for an answer. Okay. Uh, you have to be kind. You have to be gentle, but you have to be determined. Mm -hmm. So, most of the time, the owner will say, "I'm busy now. I cannot talk. I, I cannot talk give to you." So, give me a business card. And say, "Okay. By the way." I have this energy drink, it's cold, I had it in my uh, cooler, here, open it up, puff, you just pop it up, I would like for you to try, I have to leave, and I'll come back, you don't even have to call me, you can look it up, we, we have a website, see if you like it, mm -hmm. 9 out of 10, everybody will, will try it, we'll try. and 9 more than 9 out of 10, <laughs> they're surprised, and they say, Good. It's good. And then they try to figure out what's the taste of it. And you get all different people saying different opinions. It tastes like pineapple. It tastes like uh, peach. It tastes like nobody's getting the actual taste, but everybody likes it. Mm -hmm. So you make the move like you're leaving. And when you're by the door, you say, by the way, I also have some marketing material I would like to leave behind. We have a sticker with a pull and push that they can put at the front door. We have uh, the little cards that you can put on, on the shelf outside the refrigerators. So we have uh, many marketing material that they, that they can leave behind. And the surprise is why you live. You're going to say, by the way, we are 30% less expensive than any other energy drink out there. But we sell for the same price. So your markup is about 120 to 150 percent. That's when you get the attention. Mm -hmm. You gotta have a good product, and you gotta be able to make the money because they work hard and they gotta pay their bills. Like for me, I've always uh, lead to the uh, referrals, introduction. Say, listen, I know this grocery, I know that grocery. Like I'm trying to find common groceries that they know of, and they can call on me and say, "Yeah, I know Alex. Alex is a good guy. Like he, uh, we service him." Like, does it make sense, like, when you sell, like, when you're approaching the grocery and say, listen, you need referrals, this is a list of groceries that already sell. Maybe you have your friends, like, people that you know on, on that list. Of course. You can call them up and say, they, they can say that that's, this actually sells, this actually moves over the shelves. And so th that's introduction, kind of much warmer referral than just cold like, walking. Well, your first question was the cold approach. Yes. My second approach is to go to the stores that were already the open and ask the owners, by the way, do you know so-and-so? I was there the other day, they, they, didn't, they didn't purchase the energy drink. Would you mind to give them a call? Yeah, yeah, and that's how you get... Call for me or let's call together. Yes. Okay, so, but the key, and I really want to be firm on this, Fire Mars Ranch, you can hit a thousand stores, but probably more than that. Again? Within a five miles range, you usually have over a thousand stores. Because it's not just one target. Mm -hmm. Everybody, like vape stores. Oh. I forgot to mention the vape stores. Mm -hmm. And then we're coming up with a, new, with a new drink. So the new drink is going to be the coffee with the CBD, which we're going to introduce to the vape stores first. Okay. But we give everybody the same opportunity to be able to carry it. See, once you've done the five miles range, now within five miles range where you live, a lot of people heard the name of it. A lot of people say, who? Who is this guy? Who's this other? It's another beverage. It's another energy drink. But then 
you can expand and move eight miles range. And again, always on a perimeter, always on a circle, so you don't miss anybody. And before you know it, if you up to a 10 miles range, you should be able to have between 150 and 200 clients, which one salesperson will have a hard time to serve. So now the next approach has to be the social media. So we have to contact the same stores through the social media, show them what are we doing for them, post their pictures, promoting the business. We want to promote their business contingent with ours at the same time. Mm -hmm. Promoting our business is not going to help. Let's say I'm friends with groceries, and the, uh, diners. So I always invite, there's a rabbit, like a, a little... Uh, it's a friendly rabbit. It's a friendly one. You, you know him. He comes often. Uh, uh, so, but when I promote uh, things, I start to go to birthdays of these people. I start inviting them for like the, uh, they invite me for their weddings. We we become friends. We go hunting. We go fishing together. Does it matter to build a relationship with those folks like consistently? Like they go to the bar. They all meet up. Let's say I have a, a group of. Uh, Pakistani owners of groceries and these guys are very close family and they're very f close friends so they, the information travels really fast between the the group so they talk to each other they meet up after work once in a while they have their backyard parties is that important to go to those parties and serve drinks for free and to get them the owners uh... it's important to establish a strong relationship with the store owners mm -hmm. But we always need to prove ourselves first. Mm -hmm. And the way we prove ourselves is providing the marketing for the store owners, sending the traffic to let the people know that they should go there. Sometimes you have pizzerias, bars next to each other. So our marketing team has to find the niche to differentiate everybody so there is no competition, but there is exposure. So, I'm very strong about loyalty. I'm very strong about proving yourself. At the end of the day, it's, not, it's easy to sell a product. It's not easy to get repeated business. And the repeated business is the key. So you have to establish the relationship. Um, doing the events is also key. But let's keep in mind how many people are in this country. Um, this is a multi-billion dollar business. So our approach has been the mom and pop. And that's how we got so many stores so far. And how do you get a big, a big account? Net, net, a net cost, or, you know, big stores. We starting now. We're just starting uh, this week to approach the bigger accounts. So basically... The next step from the salespeople is to go to the distributors. Mm -hmm. Now the distributors heard of you, and all they want is a better price that, that we offer to the store owners. What's the way around that? I'm not going to offer a better price to the distributor. I'll offer the opportunity to distribute to our stores. Okay. And I'm, I will never leave any of my salespeople behind. So my salespeople, they'll be taken care, regardless. So while I take care of all of the salespeople, the distributor will have the opportunity to get new accounts. Now, the first thing they're going to ask me is going to be a better price. And my answer is going to be very simple. Depending on quality, depending on volume, we will give you a free product, but the price stays the same. Now it's up to you what you're going to do with the free cases. I expect for the distributor to give these free cases to the store owners and not to keep it. And of course, now that we just started, if a distributor takes advantage of that, I will not support that distributor. Because to me, it's a team effort. Everybody has got to work together. That's the most important thing. And then after that, we can go to chain stores. Do you have a partnership with other 
uh, vendors, let's say someone sells a snack bar, someone sells a, a gum or like any other product that can be sold next to the uh, energy drink. Uh, like is it because for salespeople sometimes it makes sense to have two, three products rather than just one? Well, those are independent salespeople. They actually right. do not work for, for the company. I do have associations with that, but I am focusing on the energy drink. You are focusing on your drink, but it makes sense sometimes to align yourself next to other same business owners like yourself. Like Yes and no. Together. Yes okay. and no. It depends on the salesperson. It depends on the, on the integrity of the person, mm -hmm. because sometimes it takes away. Right. I do, because... I, yes. Can I get gummies? Can I get other products? Absolutely. They, they can sell like two products and like they're still going to the same store. So they can, if they have two uh, guys like Dino, basically it's they double their uh, uh, revenue. But that's what the distributors do. Distributors are not going to sell just the energy drink. I see. They're going to sell, they got hundreds of, of different uh, right. products. But so salespeople just pick one. Salespeople just pick one, and they can make they can make a good living just with that one. The key is to establish the relationship and to create a, a strong foundation. Is there like a, a library of uh, ideas and suggestions for your salespeople to go by? If a person never done anything like that, and they want to know how to save on gas, how to save on route, how to look at Google Maps, like certain you know, little simple stuff, like how to store it in, in the car or in the, in the storage. Uh, to get, like, do you have a suggestion for that? I'm, I try to make it as easy as possible because it's life. Life is experience. You only learn from your mistakes. So we have uh, two warehouses, one in uh, Long Island and one in New Rochelle. We still have provisions, and um, I also make the product available on my house, which is actually in between, and the salespeople can choose which way to go. So if they, have, they are east, they can go to the warehouse that we have in Long Island. If they are west, they can go to New Rochelle. If they're in between, they can come to me. Uh, that's one way. but. In answer to your question, you save on gas working within those five miles range. That's because you're going to create 200 accounts. That's a lot of accounts. 200 accounts is a, it's a lot of accounts to serve. Out of 200 accounts, if you end up with 25% that is solid clients, you made it. Um, Gas stations is a huge consumer. Delis are a huge consumer, especially in the summer. Um, people that uh, do landscaping, they probably drink two or three energy drinks a day. How do you get to the owners of the business? Usually the kids that work there are you know, not always, always the owners. Like if it's a chain, like one person can own like high five stations or five, five groceries. Is there oh. a key for that? The key is your Rolodex. <laughs> is who you know. Uh, you can go online. You can do all the research. You can contact the company directly. But an older person that's been in business many, many years, usually has a big Rolodex. One person brings another. And all you want to do, uh, through your word of mouth, you want to be able to contact the people in charge. At the end of the day, when you talk about the big chains, it's not so hard to get on the big chains. You can go to the brokers. You go to the brokers, they get 3% commission, you're in. But what if they don't sell the product? What if they don't give you the retail space that gives the exposure that you need for a new product? Okay. So those are the things that you have to overcome. Guys, we are kind of uh, struck with time, so we will finish that segment right now. We will uh, hopefully you will comment and uh, like that this uh, segment. If uh, you do, we will do another one for you. Okay, thank you, thank you, Dino. Bye bye, guys.